Okay, so since the last video, um, you can see behind me, I've tidied all this up a bit. I've put my shelf back on the wall and I've also enclosed all the cables in uh, this nice trunk in just to keep everything a bit neater. So today's video, what we're going to do is to basically add in a AC isolator, the fuse box that this is going to go into, oh, and the uh, some trunking and that sort of stuff to just keep it all, keep it all neat, neat and tidy. Um, as soon as I come into the garage, it seems like all my neighbours just want to get the lawnmowers out and make a lot of noise. And you can probably hear some birds singing in the background and all sorts. So bear, bear with me and hopefully this won't be too noisy. Okay, so first things first, what I'm going to do is have some trunking that goes across here um, that we can basically use as a sort of cable um, containment. Um, and then the idea is that we can loop all the cables from the inverter down. Uh, the battery one will probably still run over that way, um, but then we can have everything in here linking up, up into the fuse box and then eventually into the house and then the consumer unit. So first of all, I'm going to cut some cable, some of my trunk into size. Um, that's probably about right, so that's 70 centimetres. Seventy centimeters, it is. Um, as they say, measure twice, cut once. Yeah, that should do well. I use this margin block just to uh, try and keep a square cut. This is, this saw is probably quite blunt. Yep, it is very blunt. There is no way in a million years that that is straight. <laughs> Nowhere close. Brilliant. So the idea with this is that it will basically go on the wall around that sort of space. And then we can use that to connect in everything else. To mount this to the wall, uh, I've actually been using these, which are wall plug less fittings. Um, one of the requirements these days of new electrical installations, I'm not saying this one actually applies to in my situation, um, but to comply with modern regulations in the electrical world. Things like wall plugs can't be used, particularly for plastic. Um, because the, the, the whole idea is that the cables are still contained if there is a fire. And obviously if there's a fire, plastic melts, wall plugs fall out the wall and potentially all the uh, cables fall off the wall as well. And the, the whole idea of this is, is to protect uh, fire, fire people or fire persons um, who are out dealing with a fire, potentially foot, house full of smoke and the risk of getting entrapped inside cables um, and potentially even live cables is obviously a risk, risk to those. Do you want wall dog anchors or screws? Um, they basically, well, it recommends a uh, five millimeter uh, hole to be drilled. However, I find if you use a five millimeter hole, they're really quite loose. Okay, so for now, I'm just gonna put a hole roughly central and and then center it up afterwards. Rather than using washers, I'm actually using these fire rated clips to hold the trunk on the wall. And this will then also hold the uh, cables in place as well. Okay, so. Right, so these are the next two items to go on the wall. 
uh, we have a AC isolator. Uh, so the inverter comes out of, or the, the grid connection from the inverter comes out of the out of the inverter into the AC isolator, and then the AC is isolator comes out into the consumer unit or the fuse box in this in this uh, regard. This is just a, just a garage uh, unit. Um, within this, we've got its own RCD. Uh, so this is a 63 amp RCD um, and a 10 and 20 amp uh, circuit breaker or fuse. Uh, both of these are uh, type A rated, which means they're suitable for uh, both AC and DC um, usage. When I say DC usage, it's DC earth, earth leakage, so um, that's more protective for things like inverters and things with switch mode power supplies and that sort of stuff. Side. Yeah, good chance I might hit the other side, so looks like I can take the uh, switch off. I can dim round the side. Right, I can almost completely forgot that I actually had a laser line. So what I can hopefully do is put that on the end of my trunk in and then use that to uh, give me a rough line. <laughs> well, I can tell straight away the uh, brickwork in this house is not straight. Anyway, so I want that to be in my there. Probably easier for me to so mark. Put that back on there. Okay, mounting the fuse box. So on the bottom of this, it has a 25 millimeter cutout. I think it is. This is um, 25 millimeter conduit with a coupler. So I'm going to take this apart. They're nicely built, actually. These things are metal. Pretty thick metal as well, actually. So now I want to uh, look at connecting up the input terminals and the inverter um, down to the trunk in and then round to the fuse and isolator. In the uh, inverter kit you actually get this um, sort of waterproofing blank as it were but obviously because I'm using this in-house in I don't really need um, the, the IP rating and I've also decided not to use these uh, grommets so I'll take those off. What I'm going to use instead is some plastic uh, Copex or corrugated sleeving. Now this is quite good because it basically you can cut it to length as you want. Um, it's still got the same 20 millimeter connection on the end, which will screw into there um, and give me a nice uh, finish. And it's Pretty easy to cut with a uh, sharp knife. So I'll uh, cut my fingers on camera. So 
then using these push fit connectors you can basically just screw it onto the end of the, the tube okay so that's basically going to go on there with the cables in it and then run down to the trunk in below it so I'm just going to place this on temporarily just to get everything aligned Um, I probably didn't point out actually that um, this inverter supports a uh, almost like a UPS mode, emergency power supply mode. So if the grid does fail, it can provide a um, an outlet. Theoretically, you could use that for a sort of whole grid swap over and disconnection. Um, but part of the G99 fast track process uh, actually forbids you from, from doing that. Um, it, it, it's more than likely you need some additional testing and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, what I'm going to do with this one is basically just wire it up to a single um, or double, double outlet, um, switched outlet that we can then use if, uh, if we run into power, power, power problems in the future. Okay. So I mentioned that. Um, this inverter provides up to three kilowatts output in like a, a UPS sort of direct battery mode. So what I've decided to do is basically just adding a um, double switch socket for this. Um, and I don't believe there's any regulation that forces me to use a different color. But what I wanted it to be was completely obvious that this wasn't the main power supply. So I've gone for these uh, rather bright colored red sockets. Um, so get some more holes need drilling in the wall and attach that as well. So I'll put that on there. Um, we're also going to need to do some more knockouts to uh, make that work as well. So let's get on with that bit. we can get okay, through there. Fantastic. And then eventually that all gets wired up and that goes on there as well. So. I'm breaking everything now. So one of the other things that we need to do is add in uh, two uh, grommets for uh, earthing connections. So the earthing connection on the back of this inverter and the uh, battery uh, will also need one as well. It's basically have to have a metal case on it. So just climb on the desk a little bit. I'm just gonna... Must be the world's bluntest drill. <laughs> So that wraps up most of the physical install for this solar battery. In the next video, we'll add some cables and uh, get these things connected up. Thanks for watching. See you soon.